For the past 10 years here at the Cape Luther Institute, our deep sea research program has largely been operating in the dark. At the Aleutia here for this past week, we've fundamentally changed our understanding of the deep ocean habitats that are just offshore, and it's going to be a springboard for all the research that we do in the years to come. One of my earliest memories as a kid was, was seeing the images from space, Apollo 11, looking back on the planet. And from that moment on, I, I, I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to explore a whole new world. And getting this opportunity with Alusha just a couple of weeks ago to go down over 2,000 feet to the bottom of the ocean, the Exuma Sound, I fulfilled that dream. The Deepwater Research Program at the Cape Luther Institute started in 2010 in collaboration with Dr. Edie Witter from Orca and uh, Dr. Dean Grubbs from uh, Florida State University. Um, we ran it as an island school project and we literally had students helping catch species that were new to science. The program has evolved over the years to encompass Deepwater Trap, Deepwater Longline surveys, Deepwater Beta Video surveys, but we had never had the opportunity to go visit this place in person. When the sub is released from the crane off the back of the Aleutia, you hit the water and it's, it's maybe my favorite part of the dive, which might be kind of surprising, but you know, on the flat calm days we had last week, the light is incredible. You see these light rays coming in, you get that half and half perspective, so you can see almost 360 degrees around you. So these are very basic questions. The questions are, what occurs where and how many are there? As you look closer, you start to see these frogfish and different urchins and sea anemones um, and little crinoids popping out of the sediment, sort of filter feeding, moving slowly along the bottom. Cuban dogfish uh, were probably the, the most abundant shark that we saw anyways. We also saw a really small cat shark. These things sort of pop in and out of the floodlights. Um, I'm sure there's more on the periphery that can see us, but we can't see them. There's actually a lot of species that take a longer time to get attracted to bait and even settle on things like mammalian bones after a whale fall. So what we did was we dropped a pig carcass, a 77-pound pig, inside of a cage that semi-excludes predators. And so we'll vary the accessibility of this carcass over the next few months and try and get an idea of what species we can pull up that might be new to science, that might be new to us here in this location, and also get an idea of, of sort of what species are responsible for actually consuming mammalian tissue at depth. And that has implications for forensic science as well. In parallel, we're trying to put down baited video units, which is a common technique to look at the relative abundance and even distribution of highly mobile marine predators like sharks. And so we want to build up an understanding of what species are occurring at these different depths. As these marine organisms are swimming around in the environment, they're sloughing off little pieces of tissue. Basically, little fragments of DNA are actually floating everywhere in the water column. And so we could potentially look at the presence and absence of different species, and also the relative abundance of different species, and then compare that to the data we've collected from the baited video units. Getting the bathymetry data, most importantly, will really provide a foundation for everything that we do in the future. It's easy to focus on nearshore environments, places like mangrove ecosystems, coral reef ecosystems, 
but there are these incredible habitats just offshore that aren't included in any kind of marine protected areas, but have these incredible organisms that are often endemic to the area, that are often very much understudied, that are being exposed to fishing pressures elsewhere in the world more and more frequently. It continues to astound me, the creativity of nature. Support offered by Ray Dalio, the Dalio Family Foundation, um, Woods Hole and all the crew up there, and all Ocean Productions to make this project happen has been incredible. We've got to explore the unexplored, which is right on our doorstep.